All right, we're going to open up the uh, Budget and Finance Committee work session primarily to uh, kind of put to the public uh, with explanation of the amendments for consideration next Tuesday. I'll preface it a little bit that um, budgets are going to need to take priority uh, if, if we want to keep the, the pace of approval uh, moving forward. And, and what that means is there's some, some charter and code language that specifies that within uh, 14 days uh, of, a, of a public hearing, we have to take action on the budgets. So next Tuesday will be day 14. Uh, if we don't act on Tuesday or come to complete decision making, then we're required to have another public hearing. The technicality on that is you cannot act on the budget uh, within seven days of a public hearing. So you have this window that you have to work around. So it would be a simple matter to say, we'll just open public hearing, close it, and act. We're not allowed to do that either. So. I think the idea is that, you know, we want to keep the process moving. We've got Thanksgiving coming, uh, but a full agenda. So uh, how that happens um, would, would, would be two ways. Uh, I appreciate all the assembly members um, that continuing urging to get the amendments to us, and it looks like everybody has done that. I don't think it means that we can't move floor amendments, change our thinking, or be swayed based on discussions with the public between now and Tuesday. However, the idea that, that they're all in front of us now means no surprises, hopefully, and our ability to sort of uh, 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 put a script to it. This year, um, with the exception of about 25 minutes, um, uh, as the same as last year, with the exception of about 25 minute review with Ms. Mahoney yesterday afternoon, this is pretty much the first release of the information uh, as it may be. So uh, that said, it's, it's uh, sort of open for discussion. How is a Chairman, I'd like to work the work session today would be to start with the operating budget, the proposed amendments, and then put the task to the maker of the amendment to sort of summarize and speak. I'd like to not debate, um, move the topic in from an informational perspective and perhaps a reasoning as you see it, but um, just as I got wordy now, we need to be pretty concise because we've got both operating and uh, capital with a fair number of them. So. Jump right into it. Um, again, my committees are typically, if you want to voice something, speak up. If it becomes offensive, then I'll have to start taking names or raising hands. So, um, Mr. Trainee or Mr. Steele are up for amendment number one. Okay, Bill, thanks. Amendment number one deals with our, what we've been working on with the taxis. We, we need to have two full-time transportation inspectors to make the, the taxi system work correctly. Right now we have one part-time inspector. I'm told the administration supports this. We've got additional money coming through from the taxi cab industry. We want to use that. Have two full-time code inspectors to make sure they're where they're supposed to be. Got it. Uh, number two is, uh, again, Mr. Steele, Ms. Gray Jackson, and Mr. Trainee. Uh, modifying the uh, FCC grant. What I want to do with that one is, as you know, we, re re we revised the community council ordinance. We're requiring more work from the community councils. And their budget has gone down, as a constant reminder, from 130000 to, I think, 80000 This is just to say, since we're giving them more work to do, we expect to pay them a little bit more to do that work. And I guess just for all the makers of that, um, it's relevant to the funding source that you request. So have you guys talked to your amendments? Can you just describe your anticipated funding source? Even though it's written here, I want it on the record. All right. The, uh, the second one that I just talked about is coming from a uh, property tax. The first one will come from the revenue coming in from the taxi cab industry, from fees. Great. Is that all you have, Mr. Trainee? Well, I've got, sir. Uh, Mr. Uh, Trombley is talking about amendment number three. Uh, just simple reduction proposed property taxes. So it would be a reduction of $2 million in the, in the $5.3 million increase that we're looking at. And the justification for this is that every year we usually end up with additional money in our fund balance or savings or surplus as some people like to call it so in anticipation of that i thought it'd be prudent to to not raise taxes the, the 5.3 is proposed question sure are you talking about reducing known 2012 fund balance or anticipated anticipated unknown i know anticipated unknown that's correct 
Ms. Stamboski, you have an amendment number four. I do. This essentially will retain the current level of service for the ASP service patrol band that the assembly just recently passed. The administration didn't carry forward that increased service in the 2014 budget, so I'm trying to preserve that. Uh, the funding source is tax revenue. However, um, I do anticipate in discussions with the CFO that there's going to be a, a $100,000 carry forward from the Health Center Foundation grant. So I think it'll offset. But I do want to point out to the body that one of my capital requests is from Juno for the same amount. So I'm hoping actually there, it'll be negligible. And when we drift into making statements that the administration did or didn't, I want to give the administration chance to do that. So it's either best to stay away from that speak or uh, I guess Mr. Mayor, Ms. Domboski stated that you weren't intending to carry forward the additional van funding uh, to up it to two. Is that is that a fair observation? Well, a couple things. Um, we are looking for other sources of money, just as Ms. Domboski mentioned. Plus, the South Central money came in so late, we will be able to carry some of that money forward. So um, we're going to examine her request and work together on it. Uh, amendment five, um, Mr. Hall is uh, talking about modifying the assembly budget. Yes, it's uh, 30000 We've got to hire outside counsel for Everhart um, versus the municipality. And uh, property tax would be the resource. Is that a legal matter that we're not allowed to talk about? But we need to get it in the budget, so your intention is to do Mr. it this way. Uh, yeah, Mr. Friedel. Mr. Chairman, Assembly members, you might recall this involves the assessment districts in the Turnigan area. It went to Superior Court. The Superior Court has remanded it back to you for further findings. So you're going to need to conduct a hearing. The purpose of having outside counsel is because we can't do it for you. We represent the staff side of the issue. But you need counsel to guide you through the hearing process, set the procedural rules, and help you come up with a decision that meets all of the Superior Court's requirements for a, for a good, well-reasoned, uh, and well-documented <coughs> decision. For clarity, you're modifying the assembly budget on this. Does that Correct. mean we would manage our own legal then? We, we did. Correct. And uh, Amendment 6 is modifying the Health and Human Services budget, Mr. Flynn and Mr. Hall. Yeah, just real briefly, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these are two municipal facilities that are operated by nonprofit entities. Uh, and we've able to do it. We've held them flat in the last four or five years or so. It's a small increment to make up for some of those positive budget. Question. I have one too, if you don't mind. The contractual nature of how we, I know Chugiak in terms is under a contract with their providers. Is this just, you tend to try to modify the contract amount we contribute, or what would you like to see? Uh, giving the administration the additional funding so that when they renegotiate the contract, they have the flexibility to provide the increase. Thanks for the clarity. Go ahead. My question was similar because of the contractual nature of our relationship. I was wondering if you were intending this just to be a grant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think yes. his answer was to urge you to renegotiate well, the contract and give him more money. You, but you write a contract for services, yes. and that's already been established, and it already goes up by CPI. So, if I recall correctly, it's been considered at least in anchors has not gone up, and it's expiring this year. Well, maybe we'll move that into debate on Tuesday. But the idea is that I think Mr. Flynn is relatively clear. Unless you want to speak some more, I'm good. trying to stay away from Knowledge whether it's a good idea or not. But. <laughs> Um, Mr. Steele and Ms. Domboski yeah. are modifying the assembly budget. Number yeah, seven. We're, basically this is just an attempt to uh, to move forward with the recommendations of the Citizen Task Force. Uh, with a, uh, funding uh, a COSAC in the, uh, uh, the Chambers, Lusac Library area for uh, to provide uh, greater information to the public. My question is that what does that look like? Is a kiosk more information, or is it a computer? Or a it's going to be a computer board? station, uh, is as it is envisioned. But uh, the details are to be uh, are to be worked out. And again, with the movement to the assembly budget, that means we're going to manage the implementation of that. Or, or I guess my question: so. Typically, we do the IT interface, but you guys are computer skilled. <laughs> Amanda, Mr. Baskin. Uh, uh, I don't know that I am, but I know Amanda has got an, uh, a cost estimate, and because it has to be a secure location, it has to be locked down. It's, it's a little. That's why it's ten thousand and not two thousand. So I guess my question will be Tuesday: Is is it right to be in the assembly's budget and not modify somebody else's budget? But I'll leave that for later. Um, Mr. Birch, Amendment Eight on police budget. Uh, 
basically this is just a follow-on recommendation uh, I had uh, a number of constituent inquiries regarding the uh, uh, overcharging for false alarms and uh, this is going to be an impact on the on the police budget and I'm looking at uh, doing that in this manner and we've had it in front of us at a, you know, two or three times and uh, we're pointing out that this might be I'll just take a point. Uh, we uploaded the link to this PDF file on the assembly web page too. So if, if you want to see it or forward it on, that's a good way to, to cut down on paper. Um, public transportation, Mr. Flynn. Yeah, sure. This would just improve the fare increase to provide the same level of funding for public transportation. And you you raise property taxes Correct. is what you mean by increment? Yeah, general tax. Ms. Johnson, are you on the line? Yes, I am. You have amendment number 10, and that's your solid waste services reduction. Right. I think we, those who are at the work session of solid waste services, heard the director say that he was going to make some, some personnel changes, and this is the uh, appropriation or, or the expenses for those changes. And, and this is inside the, uh, the enterprise budget for that department, is that right? Right. Got it. There's a question from Ms. Mahoney, Ms. Johnson. Thank you. Refuse? Refuse or disposal is the question. Which side? Ms. Johnston? Yeah, I'm thinking about it because I think some of it could be administration. I would say um, it would be the um, Election. Okay. 11 is an amendment by Mr. Honeman and Mr. Steele on uh, um, something to do with ASD. This, this is to, uh, to provide funding uh, or reduce funding uh, for uh, the costs that we, uh, we build the uh, ASD for uh, uh, sending out and collecting the tax bill. So you want the municipality to cover the costs as opposed to the school district? Right? Uh, the school district is not a taxing authority. The municipality is. It's a municipality's responsibility. Okay. I'll, I'll have discussion about that as well. As long as it's not debate, Ms. Mahoney, it go ahead. It's not a debate. This is just a factual correction. The total cost um, to do the billing is $530,000. So the school district gets 49% of that. So the amendment should be for $260,000. If you're truly intending to split the cost, I think that's a valid point. And, and I would love to go into debate, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Take it offline, people. Oh, you're saying the charge back to the district, however, yes. is to... Yes, uh, yes, to yes. I'd be okay with that. Go, go, back to, uh, go back to debating offline. <laughs> you're allowed. I'm sure we will. Um, this is mine, amendment number 12. There is a... Uh, a reserve amount, and I don't think it's restricted, but back in the day when the legislator in Juneau uh, re reallocated the funding formula, we had set up, a, I guess, maybe a little bit of a safety net on the uncertainty of, of, of per pupil's funding, and we put uh, well over a million and a half in there, and I think we've seen now two, two cycles of funding where we need to uh, bring that out. We've always had the money in our account. It's not a reduction of ASD's budget, so modifying a specific fund, uh, and I think it's one 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 zero 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 by reduction of eight hundred thousand of that, and just putting that into a property tax relief. Did you have a clarification? Does that zero out that account? Then? No, no, no. There's still uh, anywhere between. I think I'm. Mean, my intention is to leave three hundred thousand in there. Okay. There. Okay, it's to correct. Sure. So, what happened is, is, is we used, we showed you one million in fund balance to fund a one point five million. Expenditure. Understand. And we kept the 1.5 in the operating side, so 500,000 of what we originally submitted was property taxes. So the 1.5 is there. So I'm assuming that this 800,000 reduces the 1.5, so that there's 700,000 left. So I just wanted to clarify. That. Uh, I had thought we had spent down some of that, Miss Mahoney. And from my understanding, at the work session, was we had spent some of it down. You we gave did. us an indication it was 1.1. We did, but then when we budgeted in the operating side, we kept it whole so that it was full.
fully funded, and we assumed that one million would be available that would be fund balance for the fall. And, you know, okay, so your recommendation for my goal of having 300000 as a buffer fund, you would modify this amendment then to say a million dollars in property tax relief? If you want the balance to be 300000 and there are no other amendments, your amendment should be one point two. Okay, well, I'll, I'll intend to, to go down that path. There's also um, Amendment 13. Uh, was anybody else having a comment on that? I guess. Um, Ms. Johnston, uh, Amendment 13, um, you talk about some things. Go ahead. Hi, and, and this is where when I, I took the 300000 that was in the budget um, and I um, reallocated that plus 450000 as far as property taxes to pay for the student resource officers during the summer months when they are working downtown on their bicycles so that the municipality would be paying for basically we would not be billing uh, the school district for the months while the school is out. Uh, Mr. Steele has a question but not to me. Uh, okay, I won't debate. Um, is, is there any offset uh, for the resource officers' uh, office space and support at the schools? Is there any chargeback from the district on that? I don't think that was to you, Ms. Johnston. It was a general question for Mr. Steele. I'm not aware of any, okay. but we can, we can double check. My only question for you on Tuesday would be um, who supervises the, the SROs in the summertime? Do, you know, they have a full-time supervisor, I believe, over there that's dedicated to SROs. Do you, do you anticipate keeping that work unit intact or just putting them back on the line? Um, I think this is a good question from Chief Mew. I'll ask it on Tuesday. That's, I just need to know if you had an opinion on an intention. No, I'll, I'll check with Chief Mew and see if that's something that we're interested in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Amendment 14 is Mr. Honeman and Mr. Steele on a police uh, budget. And I'll, uh, I'll just say I've, I've been speaking to this uh, in numerous joint work sessions with the school district and I've let members of this body know um, we've been on the body for at least a year now, close to. And uh, I don't, we can debate it if you want, but it's pretty much the entire cost of the school. We start their police officers, work for the municipality, they don't work for the schools. And the school district's having its own challenges in budget, and we need to get this back to where it should be. So your intention is to increase property taxes and give it to the school district, or no? no. Okay. It just comes out of the school district and make extra three million for education purposes where they should. Be. Gotcha. Miss Mahoney, as we always do in these discussions throughout that evening on Tuesday or whenever we do it, I think the uh, the cognizant factor on the tax cap. Where we, where we bump up against it may be helpful to know as things approve and don't approve yeah, when we get ready to exceed the tax cap. Uh, we'll be running a total because we are looking at exceeding the cap. Mr. Traney, um, you're on the line for Amendment 15. It's a modification similar to, uh, I, it looks like, to Mr. Honeman's. This is just an attempt to meet them halfway. Uh, also increasing property taxes to do it. Amendment 16, uh, Parks and Rec uh, increases from Mr. Flynn and Mr. Hall. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is similar to the last one, but the senior center only has a different department. Um, but in, these, in these cases, we own the facility, we pay a nonprofit operator to operate it, and we've been holding it flat for a while, so it's a chance to give them That's all. And so the intention, when you list the specific entities you're looking for, it's not derogatory, but earmarked funding then, as opposed to appropriating by department, you want to see these entities get that money? Correct. Uh, amendment 17 is also Mr. Flynn and Mr. Hall, library improvements technology. Yeah, this one, this one, next one, differ a little bit. Uh, this one would address the broadband needs of the library system, and I wanted to break it out from the, the materials needs, because this is one of those things we don't get to back out after we go in because broadband capacity, you pay for it in perpetuity unless you get rid of it. So this would be a permanent increase to the library budget unless someone decides to cut broadband out later. Patrick, uh, we're, the, the 200,000, um, where, where did you get that number? Uh, from the library. From the library, yeah. And then, and then so the next one is- Can I speak to this one just yeah. for a second? Yeah. Um, 
through me, the chair, I, can you ask the IT, I, Lance was here so I can't ask him, but can you find out how we have sort of an IT plan and where we're headed and who controls that IT long range vision for the library? We've asked that question and the reason, I'll just tell you really quickly, the reason why there's such a problem is because there are six or seven different networks in the library and it creates network confusion, if you will. Mm -hmm. So in order to fix it, we need to establish an IT plan to address good internet capability. Yeah, of the it's drifting towards a way forward remarks, but yes. I think if you're prepared to talk on that matter on Tuesday as it regards to well, whose broadband are we increasing and how does that work out well, if you have seven networks? I'd like to know. We need to do it. The question is, can it be done internally with our IT shop or do we need to outsource it? I understand that. Really the discussion. Is that in addition to this or is that yeah. what this is for? Go ahead, Ms. Johnston, but just a moment. It's my understanding that that's what this is for. Go ahead, Ms. Johnston. Yes, and for Tuesday night, it's my understanding that there might be a private public partnerships in the broadband, and we have the information on that also. Okay. Newly noted. 18 is uh, also a library. Uh, yeah, and this one is just a material, to purchase additional materials that we've done in the previous years. And that's, that number's also from the library? It's from the library. Yes. It's no, no, no. Oh, yes, it's from that. Okay. If you, you probably have a couple of these postcards. Yes. <laughs> so this just breaks it down. Sure. And property tax increase there. Yep. Um, Mr. Traney and Mr. Steele, um, kind of the same, same vein here. So duplication. Uh, same figures uh, uh, that we had on the last two, basically, uh, here. Um, Mr. Steele or Mr. Traney, uh, Health and Human Services sponsored with Ms. Jackson, Ms. Gray Jackson, number 20. Uh, this is basically to fund the position that we uh, currently have vacant and uh, for the uh, homeless report here. Homelessness is not going away in Anchorage. There's an amendment number 21, and this is not to say that it's a laid on the table item. It just was introduced yesterday, but I let some latitude go until the wording was correct. So please fit this to number 21. Yes. This Bill is deck referenced item 20. Yes. When the mayor got elected, one of the things he touted was his homeless coordinator. We need to refill that position. I agree with the mayor. The homeless coordinator is vital, it's needed. You can see the problem we've got in Anchorage. So that's the reason we're bringing this one forward. We drifted into that, what the mayor said, so I need to have the mayor say it. What was your response to Mr. Traney's it's comment? It's on the record. No, well, we don't want to get into debate, but the homeless coordinator established the systems that are in effect today, and so they're actually operating under the auspices of DHHS. The coordinator's job was to get those systems in place. Now they're in place and they're working. I'm sure we'll hear more about it on Tuesday, Mr. Traney. Thank you for that. Are you a Tuesday then? And that's the purpose of debate on Tuesday, Mr. Training. Um, amendment number 21 is uh, uh, Mr. Hall. Yes. Uh, we can. I can go to further description on Tuesday, but this is to provide 2.4 FTE positions. One is for code enforcement that would be housed in community development uh, for Title 10, and the would be a 1.4, which would be a person in the municipal clerks, and then a point four in the uh, council office property taxes as funding. Great, and uh, the opportunity to move amendments or change your mind occurs. I think these will all be submitted as part of a, a, an attachment to Tuesday's energy. So if the idea is that you don't want to move an amendment or you have a change, great. The idea too is that any more amendments between now and Tuesday um, are gonna to need to be moved as floor amendments. And that's, uh, that's the idea in that, in that regard. Hey Bill, this is Dick. Got a question for you. Yeah, can I, I'm going to go to Mr. Honeman first. He had his hand up high, and then we're going to go for about five minutes, and then we're going to move into capital. So go ahead. All right, quick question, and uh, I appreciate. Uh, I know that Elizabeth has been keeping track of these amendments as they came through. I don't know what the total dollar amount is. A couple of these are duplicate. Um, so the question is, is that if we get a dollar amount off these amendments, um, assuming they all pass, and we see that we're what that number is against the tax cap. Um, or can we be prepared on Tuesday to uh, find the items that we can reduce in the proposed budget that might help us keep under the cap? That's my question and how we are going to facilitate that. We'll task you with that. <laughs> yeah. We're going to need some help. Mr. Me. Traney, go ahead. So I've got a question. Can we identify those lands have at least six supporters on the assembly so we can come up with a list of those who at least six can agree on that we've done in years past and then move on to those that are 
one or two. Well, collectively, I can't do that, Mr. Train. I tried to stay away from that by having sort of an independent flair. I think you see that in that, and I did look at some of those discussions, but mind you, I just saw the amendments in a, in a total package the first time yesterday. So the idea that I could, I could uh, lobby others to kind of come together, I've, I've nudged that discussion in the past, but given the time frame, uh, I don't see a scenario where we have greater than six, but we've got plenty of time, and this is very important to get it right, so I'm not going to limit debate uh, in my suggestion on Tuesday just because we're trying to save time. Thank you. Well, now that we've got it, now, Bill, now we've got it on public where we're supporting, let's send it out to our colleagues on the assembly to see if there's any more people that want to sign on to the amendments. It's all online, Mr. Traney, and, and you're, you're, you've got uh, open meeting law requirements, but certainly nothing prohibits you from picking up the phone and calling somebody. That's the reason I'm asking the clerk's office to send to every assembly member. It's online on the front page of the assembly works, uh, assembly website, and then also uh, uh, most of us are, are weighing in, except with, it uh, looks like, Miss Gray Jackson. Hey, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Are, are you going to try and group these like ones together and we address them together, or are we going to have to do that on the floor where we say, you know, one, combine mine with that one or whatever it is? One of the strategies that's worked as, as uh, my managing of the budget through the chair is that I, I did a little bit of that already in putting them together in this order. And then the idea is that they're numbered, and my intention is to go move them, the just go down the line. If you want to skip number three, we'll skip it. But the idea that they'll be tendered in this very form, note they're numbered up on the corner for that reason. So it's up to us to group them during the conversation. You can do however you like it, but I, I'm going to urge that the management of the evening go by Amendment 1, Amendment 2, Amendment 3, and uh, we just stay on that course. Sounds like the best plan to debate. Whenever you have conflicting, there's no way to merge them. Uh, we didn't see any absolute duplications. I think the closest we came was the library. Um, Ms. Mahoney, do you have any concerns so far about the operating discussion on no, how we handle process? No, I have a, a real quick comment. Though. Sure. We are submitting an S version for the budget, and the two changes that you will see is, is if you recall, we were moving E911 out of operating, setting up a separate fund. And uh, what, what I did is just put it in writing that that fund is set up because before I verbalized it, and so now it's in writing so that you can actually approve that. The other thing is, is, is you just recently approved the increase on SAP, and so what we plan to do in regard to the MOA labor is do this the same as we did this year, is just move it to operating, from operating to capital based on actual time work. So we incorporated that because we have to have a budget to move it to. Great. So that's in there as well. And we've already approved that, so but it's in writing and that we don't have to talk about it. Yeah, and, and uh, again, Marilyn, thanks for the energy and effort keeping up. We got all of our questions timely this year, and the process was that. And the the inference that there's an S version is not is not atypical. It's it's pretty common um, now that the mayor's seen our operating amendments. Oftentimes, the administration just concurs and they change. As well as since the budgets come out, as Ms. Mahoney references, we've we've had uh, operating actions that affected the budget. So that will be revised, such as the items you talked about. So don't be surprised when you see the S version. Ideally, we like to see it uh, as far out ahead as we can, but understand it's a complicated document. But It's on, it's on the addendum. And there will be an uh, S version for MLMP and AWU, and I reviewed that with you in the work session, so there's no surprises. I just wanted to reiterate. Okay. And I guess if you have any individual concerns, you could call the assembly members and tell them that. Will there be a summary of changes attached to the S version? Um, we, did we summarize the changes on the S version? On operations, it's section 11. Yeah, on the operations, it's two sections, but I'm thinking about MLMP and AWU. They are lined out. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. see line outs probably, Patrick. Yeah. They can take a while to dig through it, but okay. All right. Uh, about halfway through on the one hour, we're going to move into uh, capital. It's a little bit um, different. The funding sources aren't so finite. When you move an amendment to raise property taxes, it really does, and then you uh, you, you go through all of that. In, in operating our capital budget discussions, there's a lot of, of, of unknowns, but I think the idea that we now see how the links through to the to the legislative priorities book, and and that I, I will say that we were successful last year in modifying both the capital budget and the uh, priorities budget or the priorities statement. For example, on our Chugiak Volunteer Fire Station, Ms. Osiander and I were able to come in after the queue. So I, I, I don't want to speak for the administration, but 
you know, we want to take action on Tuesday, but if something is missed or wording is changed, I think the opportunity to dialogue it before we package the Juno exists in several manners. Again, the legislative priority uh, discussion that we have also comes back and revisits capital projects of, of greater importance. So that said, um, we'll move into the capital budget side, and that is uh, an interesting read if you haven't done it, by the way. I just step back for a minute. Ms. Mahoney, do you know the total requested amount from the state this year? Have you ever added that up? It's about 400 million. 400 million requests. About 143, uh, but a request was about 400. Gotcha. Not, not atypical, but still a, a big number. That said, Mr. Trombley, you have an interest on uh, Amendment 1. Yes, and, it, and this, unfortunately, was when I wrote this, was tied into the what was going to go on with the tennis courts. and. With the money that we had from Project 80s, the 37 million, my understanding with with what we currently had, we could upgrade the Sullivan Arena and not have to ask Juno for additional money because it would be completely up to date. I'm not since it's a request from the state. I'm not opposed to withdrawing this uh, since the since the tennis court issue has yet to be resolved and how that money is going to be appropriated. So. Well, I, I actually will sign on with this one and keep it alive. So if you don't want to move it, I'm going to move it because no, I think it bears. I'll, I'll it. And, and I guess what Adam's talking about, Mr. Trombley, is that is that there is a little bit of duplication in the capital budget based on existing action, uh, not maybe so much in terms of total dollars, but project intent. Okay. That's my and, feeling. Uh, Ms. Mahoney, and let's make the assumption. Well, you know, no, we'll, let's we'll, just we'll talk. Okay. We're going to we'll talk to that. We've got ways to go. And, and just a note, Mr. Star, too. We, even after um, Tuesday, you know, once some things may get resolved or not get resolved, you can always add an amendment to the capital budget. Yeah, no, I guess I covered that. that. When, when's the final date to add? You, you can amend things anytime. You, you can amend the operating budget in a lot of cases anytime you want to. Right. So, but the request that we send on the Juno, there, there's got to be a finalized yeah, date. Yeah, we can't gonna, go past. What is yeah, it? Yeah, we're probably going to present them in early December to the caucus. Okay. The legislative package. So, so you'd like to have it by then. Okay. Well, we actually we'll like see that see document. That. Yeah, yeah, and, and <laughs> it's a draft when we present to you and the caucus, and then I think last sure. year we actually didn't finalize until January. We'd yeah. like to get a little bit ahead of the curve this time. Well, start okay. that worse. So a little bit of process, but I think that's a prudent discussion, and that does sure. impact other items that potentially could affect our budgets, both that's operating right. capital between now and the end of the year. Yeah, a correct. couple of years ago, for example, we had to change the current operating budget to deal with the budget shortfall in the fire department. So don't think that our current budget modifications aren't or something for the next month without rambling, but it's uh, it's not inappropriate to modify the capital budget after approval okay. uh, as policy. Uh, Amendment 2, uh, Mr. Traney, is a, is a discussion about a multi-purpose sports facility for $10,500,000. Not to get a debate, Bill, but this is what should have been in last year. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to debate it. I just wanted to know your intention. Thank you. I just stated it. We're moving on. Amendment 3 is uh, Mr. Steele, Mr. Traney, and Mr. A. Jackson on a uh, library, um, probably a CIP, um, but it looks like you're talking just two years, 2014 and 2015. Oh, I'm sorry, 2016 is in here as well. So does somebody I'll, want to speak to I'll the attention Nick on this? I'll let speak to it, but I can also. <coughs> So, Jim, go ahead. Uh, all right. Basically, what this is is to try and move the library front and center. To say we've got a plan going forward uh, for phased redevelopment of the Lusack Library, and this is uh, uh, this is that discussion. Uh, Mr. Steele, does this insinuate? Because right now there's already a request in the bonds for 2.75 million. I'm assuming you don't want to increase that an additional 2.75 million. Is we haven't seen the bond language yet, Mr. Train, uh, Mr. Trombley. So I'm looking in the, our budget book, and it's already proposed. So I just wasn't right. sure if that needed to be in there or not. Do we? Is it a redundancy, or does it have to be in there or not? Be in there? I just don't want to increase it. To the 2.775 is redundant. That's a valid point, okay. I think, in terms of that. I'll take a minute too. This is kind of where the blending of the of the capital improvement budget and the capital improvement plan kind of come together as well. Sure. So note the nuances between. A multi-year intentional plan and, and sort of a one-time, maybe that's the wrong word, but a, a capital budget item versus sort of a capital improvement plan. There's a nuance there not to be lost in, in phased funding or plans. And so yeah. I think the idea that we have, I, I think when we modify the capital plan, I think there has to be, in my opinion, a little bit more directed clarity 
uh, on it from the maker of the motion. So, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just one moment, Jennifer. And I'm just trying to advise, um, in, from my perspective, when you suggest federal funding in the year 2016, I think the maker of the motion needs to be able to speak to what level of funding that is. And if you're going to modify the capital plan, I'd sure like to know what you want the administration from a grant perspective to do or that. So expanded discussion is necessary, I think, on, on capital improvement plan come Tuesday. It's, it's a vital topic. But my suggestion is we're going to need more than just a one-line explanation. Ms. Johnson, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering if the sponsors of this amendment, uh, where I think currently the library um, has, I think, $6.7 million that has been appropriated. There is some existing funding for the library, but not not no number from my perspective. I, I don't know that, Ms. Johnson. It would be helpful to have it by Tuesday, though. Yeah, I believe it's 5.5 that they've gotten in 2012. State grant. The mayor indicates maybe 5.5 existing funds, Ms. Johnston. Thank you. And there's currently some planning. Uh, some of that may be already, uh, I don't know, if, uh, encumbered. But I don't know. Um, and just again, not to maximize the conversation, a, a compare and contrast would be helpful between what's already in our budget book on what you would like to see happen come Tuesday. It's all that, that's added. It. No. Got it. We'll, we'll look at it. Uh, amendment four is uh, some library modifications as well by Mr. Flynn and Mr. Hall. Yeah, and Mr. Chairman, this is uh, answer Mr. Conway's question in advance. Yes, this just carries the bond money over that we have already proposed. We're not looking at adding that and then boosting our state ask up to ten million. Sure. And now, I, just out of clarification, what I what I don't want to do is is that that somehow is viewed as as an increase on the bond package. Do, right. Does that have to be eliminated from from a from a standpoint of if we if we pass this, do we, do we have to eliminate this so it doesn't add an additional 2.575 yeah. to our bond? So what I was trying to do is reclarify. I'm not proposing to add 10 million to our state request. <coughs> to boost it to 10 million because it's already six and a half. I okay. Think. Well, and I, I want to interject here on legislative intent. If you'll find the process is that you can all almost always go down into layers of speak on the record and find what you're talking about. So I think it's important to say stuff like that on Tuesday's record so future administrators can see it either in the minutes vested in a verbiage or even in a recorded work session like this. Likely, if there's a dispute, um, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. So duly noted, Mr. Trombley, but I think that the, the intent is to, is to speak and to those And that's why intent clarify. And ask However a question on Tuesday, and yeah. so it's on the record. That's, that's a great approach from my perspective, so there's no Especially when it comes to capital intent and earmarked funds, we got to be clear so we don't end up with generic money. Uh, never mind. Uh, eight, Amendment five is uh, Mr. A. Jackson, uh, Mr. Steele, and Mr. Traney. The uh, bill. Uh, you want to go ahead, Nick? What this will do a lot allow us to have a plan, electronic plans review. We've been talking to a lot of. Uh, developers in town this is one thing they said we're really speed up they're getting their plans approved is to add this into our planning department so that's right we're putting the money forward on doing this mr. training my re my uh, request for you on Tuesday is to justify the bonding of that function as opposed to uh, uh, fund 181 funding or something more purpose specific to the community that uses that service so I, I don't need it debated but I, I would like you to justify how it would show up on a bond and you can do that uh, either offline or Tuesday. Thank you, Bill. I'm more than happy to. And if we can get um, our finance people to tell us what the current balance is, the negative balance on Fund 181, that would help. Right. It's yeah. still in deficit, but. We'll pay for the negative balance. It was a lot of. Um, uh, we'll get to the answer, Mr. Traney. It's not. Thank you, sir. It's not a positive number, though. Amendment so Amendment six um, is a joint amendment. Development in Midtown, they're putting 325 apartments on a site there, and we talked to them that do development in Seattle. They really want to get this electronic plans review operational. I understand the efficiencies there, Mr. Train. I'm just looking at, at how to pay for it. Thank you. The amendment six is a co-sponsored one with Ms. Domboski and myself, and I really buy into the concept of the of the community service patrols especially in the winter, having the additional staff. It breaks my heart to read in the newspapers that somebody was found either in a bad state of health or, or deceased. And I, 
uh, it really strikes me is that are we doing everything we can as a community in, in, in equipping? I think they also the discussion has to be the the, uh, the burden tends to fall on the municipality entirely. We've seen a, a retract a little bit from some of our usual providers, South Central Foundation, and the discussion that other entities and agencies may help us. So this request at, at, at Ms. Dombowski's suggestion is, again, uh, to support the project. My suggestion is to engage the state as a funding source to help us with that. Further legislative intent for me would be is if this funding could be, could be appropriated at Juneau, um, I would want to, at first quarter, revise the budget request for property tax increase. But I think there can't be any interruption of the program come January. And Ms. Dombowski has made that clear. You can speak to it. I didn't That's mean to correct. maximize it, but That's correct. outstanding. Yep. Other questions? Yeah. Bill? Yes, uh, just a moment, Mr. Training. Yeah, just uh, a question. I, we discussed this earlier uh, when during EMS, uh, during the Matrix presentation. But um, just for clarification, it would be helpful uh, maybe by next Tuesday to understand the, the how this is coordinated with the, the EMS response. In other words, do we is there a, an EMS response and then they call the Anchorage Service Patrol? And I'm just not familiar with we, how we that's. We can clarify. Either way. Yeah. yeah, and again, yeah. some of it is a continuation of a program Ms. Ms. Dombowski put forward and we approved it already. So this right. is some of continuation funding and then a different funding source in the capital. But glad, glad to have it. I think the discussion come Tuesday. Thank you. Um, there's no easy way to link the two amendments. One's a capital, one's an operating. So be cognizant that we're talking two different budgets for somewhat of a li linked uh, observation. Amendment 7, as I grandstanded at the work session, is an interest to get off the duff, to get off the dime and start to move money uh, through cooperative speak. We've got a large population that's, that's heavily in need of public safety investment. And again, the, the state's contribution has been there uh, in past for fire stations and for other that. Now it's a, it's a dip into a, a best practice solution for our 911 program. And I can't emphasize enough on, on how that is starting to become an urgent request as opposed to a, a casual request. So my amendment seven is, is to basically uh, talk about facilities uh, redesign. It links into a little bit of the AR policy statement that we're going to approve uh, on, uh, or talk about Tuesday, whether we approve it, uh, I would hope. But uh, my amendment links into the action plan that speaks to in your packet. You'll see my uh, AR uh, requesting a policy directive on consolidated dispatch and software purchases. Mr. Stark, just grew up briefly on the project name. Um, that also include next gen rather than just you know, or is it more appropriate to you know? it may be this is specific to the to the press in the police department that the, the contract is is coming due it's right. tiburon if you'll get educated tiburon's not a supported product anymore after a certain time frame so in this one it's it may be a different a different problem uh, than than my next amendment eight which is the same funding amount servicing both departments, police and fire, with the, with the intention of, of moving this to a legislative priority. I lived through um, the addressing issues that we had uh, some time back with the Godfrey incident, and, and I, w I w never want to have that happen in my community. It was a mile away from my house. So maybe a different illustration on the problem, but I, I will not, as I said earlier, compromise public safety because we can't decide what to do. So be ready for me to take my usual passion on a topic and not let up. And, and Mr. Starr, the, I think one of the reasons we did the matrix report and added in you know, that section about uh, what is the best path forward was just to get that clarity and get a plan. So yeah. it's not like there's been an action. The first thing you do is you try and get a game plan, get the best information you can get, and I think that's what we've been doing. I, I agree, and, and not to be debative here, the, the uh, inference on the 911 uh, expansion in that study came from an amendment from the assembly. So we appropriated uh, right, the I money mean, and intent last year to expand the study that you're referencing. So our commitment is vested not only in the importance of the program and product, but the time certainty that we have. So I appreciate your comments, but we're, yeah, we're, we're in alignment on this, is what you're saying. I hope so. Thank you. And we're, we'll do our best not to be on our duff. <laughs> or anybody else's duff. That's right. <laughs> and, and again, the 911 task force. It is an effort to, to keep the dialogue moving, all parties vested, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Amendment number nine, uh, Ms. Johnston, the, uh, we're, I'll step back just for a minute, is that the ones prior to this up through Amendment 8 were sort of area-wide discussions, maybe a larger project number or more central to the community. 
from 9 through the end, they move into territorial specific projects, what I want for my district, if you will, and what you want to clarify as a spending priority for your district. So what I've done here in no, uh, uh, no elaborate way was to package the amendments by district, uh, by maker of the motion, but not give somebody the floor for an hour while they talked about the great things needed in their community. So mind you, there is a capital budget. The administration does a great job of breaking the book down by district, by legislative district, by organization. And so we see projects in various parts of the budget book that describe this. So just just get familiar with your budget amendment so that you're that you're moving an action item that's maybe not already in the book, or if you have to modify what's already in the book, be clear of that. So this is city one. Number nine is specific to homestead. Ms. Johnston, okay. homestead safety upgrades for three hundred thousand. Right, and this is this is something that brought to me by our constituents, Chris Kirch and myself, and it's for uh, one of our new limited road service districts, and they need to bring their road up to code. Yeah, and I really like your linking in the description of what you want that money to be spent on. Helpful all the way around. Uh, Ms. Trom Mr. Trombley's uh, modifying the the Anchorage Golf Course Investment Plan. I reduced it from five hundred to three hundred thousand, and I apologize to I apologize to the South Anchorage representative or assembly members for not speaking with them on this first. I uh, I know it's been a policy of the administration to not put more in bonds than what we are retiring, and in, and in order to keep with that, I wanted to reduce that by two hundred thousand and, and and apply that to the two specific projects in East Anchorage. So I, I do apologize for, for not communicating that. Well, I, I would add that you also missed the boat on it. It's, it is a Project 80s project. I mean, it's a city-owned asset. Well, I'm just not clear. Do you say you're reducing the bond request for 2014 by $300,000? Or you're reducing yes. it to $300,000? Let's take away three. i am sorry. It, it's, it's two, I'm sorry, two, $300,000 from $500,000. Okay, so, so this is, I shouldn't say two. $200,000. Then are you adding it back somewhere else? Yes. Is that in here? Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. And I guess, stopping point here without, I uh, hope we can still get through these without the time frame, but when will the bond package presentation from the administration's perspective occur? When Usually, what, late January? Yeah. The first introduction? So, just sort of duly noted, Mr. Trombley's been diligent at it, is to sort of look at your funding sources and your revenue expectations in your 2014 because some of the, the information on what intentions to bond, such as the library and this, the bonding source is, is listed in your budget book yeah. already. So that's where Mr. Trombley's picking up on this. He doesn't have any inside information beyond that on the, on the legislative intent of the administration on bonding. Yeah. Not all of it's probably in there, but I think a good portion of it should be in there um, if, if I had my my way, it should should link to where you where you want to get your money and what project you want to fund with it. Um, Miss Miss Johnston, um, Amendment Eleven is uh, Independence Neighborhood Parks. Right, and this is another one that's uh, local to Mr. Birch and my and I actually it's close to Mr. Birch's neighborhood. Uh, it's a neighborhood that I've been involved with since 1980. Um, age community and at this point has no community park. Okay. So I want to skip getting it on the Catholic Public list. Great. Um, amendment 12 is from Mr. Steele, Ms. Gray Jackson, Mr. Traney for a uh, fenced dog park, Valley of the Moon. Mr. Traney? I can speak, I can speak to this one, Bill. We, uh, downtown, I've had a lot of requests of people, including our Animal Co-Advisory Board give them a downtown park for small dogs. And in talking to John Rod, I think we can carve off Potter Valley, the Moon Park, and create a small dog park down there. That's what we're trying to do. And you want to put it in a parks bond is your intention for funding? Yes, parks bond. Amendment 13 is a uh, public works improvement on 42nd Street, Lake Otis to Florina. Mr. Starr, just one comment on the, um, the previous one. Just a clarification, in the text it says, 
um, we manage five designated off-leash parks and none provided closed facilities. We did, of course, as you may remember, just enclose the one on Arctic right across from AWWU's headquarters. So we do it now have one. That is correct. We do have one now. Sure the this was done the before we got the one. I understand. Right. Go ahead and closed. clarify that or change your amendment come Tuesday, Mr. Training, if you wouldn't mind. Not a problem, glad to. Forty uh, Second Street, Lake Otis to Florina, uh, design study. Right, that's that's one of mine also. It's over there. We're asking for a state grant on it. That area was built when the developer would come in with a cat and throw down some asphalt and call it done. We have no drainage in that system. What we're trying to do is upgrade that whole neighborhood. Got it. Uh, Mr. Trainee, Mr. Steele, Mr. A. Jackson, a public works improvement project, Sylvan Drive construction. Right, last year we went down to Juneau and got funding for Sylvan Drive from the state. They were very nice to us for design and planning work. Now we're going back for construction money. Sylvan Drive desperately needs this. Uh, the water overflows and goes everywhere. It damages the homes and their foundation. So we're going back to the state to ask them, now that you're giving us the planning money, let's get the construction money to get this done. And Bill, could you add me as a co-sponsor to your number six, number 11 that Jennifer had, please? Uh, six and 11, um, we can we can surely do that, Mr. Trainee. I, I'll talk to the makers here and make sure that's what they want. Thank you. Um, we're looking to talk about a bus turnout at Dowling and Sunchase, uh, Mr. Right. Steele. What happens is, Dowling goes and Sunchase is right by the Turner Park that's there. And going door to door and talking to people in the Turner Park, their kids have to walk down to Dowling and stand waiting for the bus to come and pull them, <coughs> pick them up. And the problem is a bus turnaround there would be nice because it gets the bus off the streets so it can successfully pick up the kids. And we're looking for state money to do this. Mr. Trombley wants to bond for capital improvements on Campbell Airstrip Road. Mr. Trombley is number this 16. Been a this has been a project that Stuckigan Heights has wanted their road improved for quite some time. That's been a challenge getting the money from the state because the because our local municipality here has, hasn't been willing to pony up any money on it. So I wanted to add 200000 as an incentive to get, that, get those dollars for a uh, to, to incentivize the state legislature to, to put some money in. I think that the total request from the state, I believe, is 5.5 million. Um, I know that there's a pared down project to reduce the to reduce the cost from the trails and, and stuff like that to actually just the road improvement. And that, and that road is deteriorating pretty bad. And we have a fire station right there as well. So, Mr. Michaelis, is this in the arts the district? Can we bond for that? I'll have to go back and look. I'm not sure, I'm not sure where is. the road is. I think that second it is, but if we're talking. Are we talking the whole road or we're just no, talking about that piece? No, it's that four miles and, and it's it's already, I've sat down with Rob yeah. Thompson okay. and Jerry, Jerry Hanson. Thanks for doing your homework, Mr. Trombley. Sure. Somebody else had a comment? I'd like to add on that as well and, and uh, echo the comments. Sure. It is a priority. Can you modify you those amendments? Sponsor? But I'll have to give you authority yeah. after I talk about it, so just keep a note. You just add your name on them. Yeah, that's what I mean. Close one. Yeah. Um, Amendment 17, Mr. Trombley, is a Patriot Square up in the Muldoon area. Sure, and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to, if this is the proper method to do this, but, and I should, I'm going to amend that to the Department Department of Health and Human Services. And right now, Anchorage Neighbor Works is working on a project called Patriot Square. It's for homeless veterans. They they do need state funding, and I want to, and I, I'd like the municipality to lobby for this project. It's important. It actually does, they've already purchased some land to do, take down deteriorated housing and, and build the self sustainable affordable housing modern, uh, model for, for homeless veterans. And so this would actually be a, and, and I don't know if we can do this, can, can we appropriate the money to DHHS and then they do a direct grant? We should ask that on Tuesday, I think, rather than come up with a strategy today. We don't want to decide, but I think the idea that you would get us preliminary information on, on the project would be probably appropriate to send to all assembly members. But the information on how we do it and which department I think makes sense sure. to talk about on Tuesday. And, and you'll notice that the amount is the exact same amount that I'm reducing Sullivan Arena. Got it. We're just down to five minutes is all I was getting at. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna move to extend till uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, I don't know if there's any hurry, um, but it, it, we'll, we'll keep going. Yeah. Um, okay. Mr. Trombley, a Bowling Street upgrades, again, you know, the idea up here. Um, it's, it's, this, it's the same thing as before. Uh, 
I know 250,000 was appropriate from the state last year, so that's sitting there, and this is just to include, but I know Mr. Harmon has one right after me, so I'll, I'll let him go. So you have two ways to do this, in my opinion, which is to bond for it, and you can move bonding language yourself, so we can get it in the budget for sure, and then follow up with, if the administration doesn't include it in their road package, okay, you'll well, have to move a bond. I'll talk to Mr. Harmon, because he actually, there's no state request funding for Bowling Street in our capital budget, and Mr. Harmon actually has that. I don't necessarily agree with the amount, so maybe we can come to some sort of compromise on that. Well, they're somewhat not linked to the state, is what you, when you mention the state, right. I, I, I agree that it's probably not an administrative request to the state, but not yet. my concept was, you know, clarify your funding between now and Tuesday. If oh, the, the, the funding would be for bonds, is, okay. is where we put in our bond, arts of bond package. Great. Uh, 19 is Mr. Honeman, um, talking pretty about much, the same area. Pretty much the same thing. The issue is that talking to the state legislators in that area, um, both sides of the aisle there, and they're looking at the municipality for a substantial amount of investment in the property for, for them to go back. They've already given some state funding for this particular area, okay. hoping they could get a temporary gap fix. Um, so we put a million into the bond, two and a half million requests to the state. Uh, Mr. Steele and Mr. Hall um, are talking about Spinard Road Reconstruct Phase 2. Yes, and we uh, we added in some bond money uh, in speaking with legislators. There's uh, We had this in, the, in the, or you had it in the capital projects last year. It was not funded. Uh, it is a high priority for our community councils in. And we included bond money this time so that we uh, we emphasize that we have uh, local uh, local interest in getting this done. And I'll try to study that personally, but is there there's something in our packet already that addresses this? It is. It, it's in, uh, most of it is in 2015. What I want is 2014, so it's ready for, uh, so we can construct the first century. And this is where one of those nuances come Tuesday, if you can explain the difference between the plan and the budget. Yes, sir. Uh, then I'll know what I'm asking on. Uh, 21, um, Amendment 21 is kind of the same uh, dialogue. Uh, Mr. Steele, Mr. Train, Mr. A. Jackson are moving this one. And so um, we'll, we'll put them both to the floor uh, unless you decide not to move it. Same project. Ms. Johnston, you have a series of Girdwood ones uh, next, all the way through to the end of the presentation. Amendments right. 20, 20 through to 28. You want to speak to all of them at once or go through one at a time? Um, and actually, we could do them as a group. These are all on the Girdwood Board of Supervisors, or not all of them, uh, priority list. I, in translating it and emailing it to the clerk's um, office, I realized I combined two different um, files that I didn't mean to. Okay, well, do you want to work on those between now and Tuesday, or do you want to speak to each of them now and clarify it? We have about three I just, minutes. I just want to say right now I'd like to withdraw number 24, number 67, and number 28. And the rest are CDLS's uh, priorities. Uh, okay. Uh, Great. We'll see how that plays out. If you want to go with that strategy or, or leave them part of the record and just not move them that night, we can do either, which we've done both uh, in the I past. I prefer to withdraw because it was my, my error. Okay. Do we have those numbers? Great. I'm going to close the work session down with just the intention that. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Hall. Number Chairman one, Hall. Uh, number one, uh, Mr. Stark, thank you for doing an incredible job with amazing that you pull that off. Number two, I have noticed that on Tuesday, next Tuesday, we're going to have a special meeting starting at 2 o'clock, 2 to 5, and just going to deal with the budget. We've got an immense, an immense agenda for that evening, and by moving the budget item uh, to, to that afternoon, I think we can handle everything. So let me ask you this, will there be a separate agenda then listing that it's meeting as a posted. special with a start and stop time? Madam Clerk? Um, Mr. Chair, thank you. I will let you know that Mr. Wheeler sent you an email since you started at 10 o'clock objecting to the idea of doing it at 2. However, um, I, I think if we can look at some other options, maybe some other items at 2, but I think we have some ideas and I 100% agree with the Chair that you will not be able to get through your November 19th agenda from until midnight, so you need to do something. Well, and that's duly noted from me as chair of budget with the earlier observation. I think everybody was here. Is we, we pretty much are committed to day 14 is Tuesday. We can't do day 15 without having another public hearing. 
uh, and, and then we have to wait seven days to take action. So we're getting awfully close to Thanksgiving in, in the December if, in fact, we can't prioritize this on the agenda. That's not my call. It's the entire body's call. But mind you, if we can't make action on day 14, we're required by charter to go into another public hearing. And then from that point on, we have to wait seven days before we can act. So the idea that I would want to see the agenda, why I asked the question is with a specific start and stop time for that or an opportunity to have a fallback to right. go into that meeting. But that's to be discussion prior. I guess the concept, again, I didn't say it enough here, is to make sure that, that they know the work products don't come from me as chair. They come from the administration in Maryland, Ms. Mahoney, Mayor. Uh, outstanding organization, and, and I guess I, I was quick in giving that accolade, but I'll do it again on Tuesday. It's no easy task, and so I'll end it with that. And just, say, just, just a quick question before we get to the time, deadline time. I'm, are you saying that Tuesday, in advance of the meeting, I, I have some work obligation issues that I'm at? And I would like a full house for the budget, yep. is all. So, right. done. Thank you.